welcome to learn smart coding in this video i'm going to show you how to use the containerized app and deploy more than one container using the docker compose come let's dive in if you have not subscribed to my channel subscribe to my channel for more videos so here's the application it's a sample application so i have a working cosmos db web api built in dotnet 7 and also a mvc racer view app web app developed using dotnet 7 two different application the web app consumes the API and they both are in the same solution. They both uses their own container, meaning there's a Docker support for each of these application. Now we're going to use, uh, you know, these two apps and show you how the Docker Compose works, the basics and fundamentals of Docker Compose. But before that, let's say if I go and open my Docker uh, desktop, right? So I don't have any image. I don't have any container. So if I open up the web app as my startup project it just opened through the docker support the docker was the startup and i can see a container showing up now right the container is showing up because the application is running now this application runs on port 32 781 443 port i mean the, the port and then the 80 port right so there are two port mapping is there now this one consumes the web api Right, the web API is nothing but uh, the Cosmos DB web API. We are going to build the task management web API, right? So that's the application. If I go to task, here you go. I got an error. Basically, the error is because the other app is not running. Now, how do you run both of these two in two separate containers? Right click on the project, click on add and choose container orchestration support. And then the first one that you see is the Docker Compose and the OS is Linux. And here you go. We got a new project called Docker Compose project. It has two files, the Docker Compose YAML file and then the Docker Compose override.yaml file. The Docker Compose files we will see, but this override is basically to override any of these environment or port or the volume specific and they are specific to the, the apps that is configured in the Docker Compose. Okay. So if I have to explain you about this, here you go. Here's the thing. The first thing is the services. Under services, you will start configuring your application. We have an application called LearnSmartCoding.CosmosDB.LinkQ.API. This name can be anything. I just named it uh, the way the project is uh, named, it, right? So that we identify what it is. I can I can name it as Web API, just Web API. I can name it as you know Web App. But here you go. The first one is called image. We don't need to specify any image because these the, the project that I'm referring itself has a Docker file and that one has an image. So let's remove the image. We don't need an image, right? The next thing is the build. Under build, there's a context. I'm saying this is the current context. That's why it's a just a dot, a period. And then we are specifying where is the Docker file for this application. We specify that the Docker file is sitting under the Cosmos DB dot link API slash Docker file. Now here you can specify the port that needs to run on this application for this container. The port that I'm going to specify for this application is 8080 and then the port is 80. That's the port mapping. Once you're done with the ports, okay, the next one you can configure is the environment. Under environment, whatever environment variable you wanted to specify here, that will be picked up. The one that I'm specifying here is the .NET Core environment. The .NET Core environment that we will set up here is the development. But if you want to override or change anything for this particular uh, API project, you can also do it in the Docker Compose override file, which I will show you before the end of this video. But right now, it's a development environment. Okay, so now we have. Uh, certain basic things called uh, the, the minimum configuration that is for your app. The next one that I will provision is the, uh, the for the web API, I mean the web app. So once you specify a name of the app and then to put a colon, the rest and all could be almost similar one. So the build and the build the context and then Docker file for this application sitting inside the task manager dot web API slash Docker file. That's why the naming is here, the path is here. Once you have these two, we have something called port and the environment, right? So here I copied the port is going to be 8081 configured to the 80 port of the container. See, the second one is the container port. The first one is the application port. Okay. We are mapping 
its containers 84 to 8081 for this application uh, environment is also set up now the web app is depending on the api to start because when you click on the task you know before that the api should be running right so there is something called depends on depends on is a flag that you can specify which application depends on which application for a bigger docker compose file where you have rabbitmq or many other application that have like class library or any project that you have to boot up you can specify all those things in the depends on so in our case in the simple example we are also using a depends on because the web app is using web api so it depends on web api now if you go to the docker override we don't need the environment certain environments here the ports we don't need it so i'm going to delete all those things because the port mapping is already done i don't need to override anything here okay i will leave the rest of the stuff here and i uh, can choose docker compose as the first one like you know you can choose that's the default one it comes when the project opens up or you can actually go to this particular uh, file where the file is placed the particular folder where the file is placed you can also use some command called docker compose up you can also use a docker command which we will see now so when i click on this it takes uh, some time to build both the containers and start up the containers so like i said you can also use the docker dash compose space up this what it will do is it will run the yaml file of the docker compose and in that we have specified the two docker file itself placed in two different project so basically it's gonna build one by one docker file two images two application two containers everything is gonna be built that's what you're seeing here it pulls the image set up the package downloads the necessary you know get packages builds publish it this is what it's doing so you can do like this also either way you do it from the visual studio or using the command both will work but i'm going to show you how it works in the visual studio okay so i'm going to stop all these process and i'll show you how to run it through the visual studio so control c will stop see as soon as you run the docker compose using the visual studio as well as the uh, docker compose command it will run as two compose when you open up the 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 compose file the two containers are sitting inside right so this is what you see so what we will do now is we will do a control c okay it's running so we'll do a control c and stop these two containers running from the command now i'm going to run it through the visual studio itself so i run it and you can see the command output window has been opened and it's going to run these every every single thing and see it started to load the api first and if you go to this a uh, docker uh, desktop you can see the two containers running under the docker compose and both the application is running now if you look at this uh, basically i'm trying to contact this api from this one uh, from the web app right so here i've configured uh, the right port here the 8080 port okay so the 8080 port is the web api that is running right and 8081 is the port which is running from the second container now even though i did when I go to task, it is going to blow up because there is one basic thing that I'm missing that I will show you. So if I go to task, it's actually going and hitting the endpoint. I'll show you when I run this endpoint, it will blow up. All right. It basically says it cannot find the request, it cannot assign the request. Reason because we should not be using uh, 8080 port. We have to configure the api's configuration in the docker compose you see this learn smart coding dot cosmos db dot link q dot api that's the base url that we need to specify in the endpoint so that's how i have specified in line number 17 and if you put this properly okay the the right endpoint will be picked up automatically from the docker container and that's how this application works now this web app is running and consuming web api through the docker compose so you have learned docker compose and we also see two containers running under the docker compose and these two containers can be now pushed to a uh, registry and you can also deploy to the application and in the next video i'll show you how to push this image to the docker hub registry and then deploy such image to the azure app service web app and i'll see you in the next video thank you thanks for watching if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tech tutorials. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Happy coding!